yeah, uh, end of this uh, uh, ninth week, I really believe. Yeah, uh, we will uh, talk about, uh, in fact, an overview of whatever we have studied so far to find out defects in mechanical systems. And this I will actually discuss with you with what is known as the machinery diagnostic chart. Okay. So, uh, just to give you an overview of whatever we have discussed in the last maybe 10 classes on starting from faults in uh, motors, gears, bearings, shaft systems and so on. Uh, just to recap what is everything about. So, by now you all know that in general this is the configuration of all machines which you will come across all out so not so all but almost all. Okay. So, again just to recap what are the common elements? common elements my prime mover mechanical unit what is the prime mover usually an electric motor or an IC engine Mechanical unit could be many pumps, generators, gear boxes, fans, blowers, crushers. rolling mills, rolls etcetera and then they are this is my bearings and these are the shafts and I have the coupling. This is the scenario of any machine for that matter. So, we know bearings there can be faults in gear boxes, gears could have faults and so on, impellers could have faults and so on. So, we will just try to and then of course, there could be structural cracks, foundation being soft or loose, uh, soft foot and so on. So, we will look into one by one just to give you an overview of what is the natural fault, what is the dominant frequency in this spectrum, vibration spectrum and what is the typical direction and certain removals. So, an unbalance can occur, where, where can an unbalance occur? Unbalance can occur in the rotor of the prime mover, can occur in the rotor of the driven unit which could be carrying a fan you all know something get deposited in the fan blade. Okay. There could be a fault and this is 1 times rpm means which I had earlier told about 1 x this is nothing but the rotational speed, rotational speed of the unit of the mechanical unit. So, if it is unbalanced you all know that this will be m e omega square r where omega is the rotational speed and predominantly you all again now know that this is the longitudinal axis and then of course, this is the radial plane. So, I will have a horizontal 
vertical no this is axial so a axial vertical horizontal as you know just again to recap vibration at any point can be measured in these three directions a horizontal and vertical okay of course i am not talking about the rotation there could be rotations about this axis as well so predominantly anywhere you see a high vibration in the radial direction and if you have the luxury of changing the rotational speed you know this unbalanced force is nothing but so if this omega if you if you had the provision of changing omega you will see that this force would increase like an parabola okay so now there could be the second case misalignment and bent so this shafts could be misaligned and you know again we are discussed how alignments can be done and this problem soccer because of loose foundation or what is known as soft foot this can happen so you know we will people give shims during installation to align it however despite the best efforts of doing this alignment because you know sometimes this couplings are chosen so that the net unbalance effects are reduced because some of the couplings can take certain angular deviations nevertheless if there is a misalignment usually there is a axial variations also and you will see 3 to 4 times x also occurring in the case of unbalance three a uh, misalignment this also occurs in the case of misalignment and if things are bent if shafts are bent there is a heavy spot so sometimes between the two points a and b there could be a significant phase difference and again just to recap because this this class is mostly a recap of what we have discussed earlier so to find out the phase difference between two signals all i have to do is take the cross phase between a and b so if in a dual channel fft analyzer i have to find out the phase between a and b as nothing but this is very easily possible okay there will be a significant unlike unbalance there will be a significant phase difference if there is an unbalance the phase difference would be almost same okay because at same time both of them would be coming up so between a and b it will be almost zero right now let's come to the next very very important case of defect and that is the case of a rolling element bearing so for a rolling element bearing there are two reasons why the vibrations occur one is the waviness 
which is out of roundness because you are supposed to manufacture a perfect ring, but then if I lay the ring there is there is a lot of undulations. Okay. Okay, if I if I open up this. So this on top of it I have a rolling element. So if a rolling element is going over a wavy surface, there will be vibrations, and another is the surface roughness. So, new bearings also have vibrations. So, it is only because of waviness and surface roughness. As a manufacturer, they reduce these vibrations by putting a layer of lubricant and bearings are actually sealed for life. Okay. But in the process of application or in the, op in the process of operation, unknowingly sometimes because of excessive load or subject to a high temperature, the temperature will rise and bake the lubricant which is one reason. Another reason sometimes because electrical discharge particularly in motors where the speed control is through a VFD drive. So, there are a lot of high frequency transients which occur. So, high frequency sparkings occur. So, they erode the surface and make it still worse. So, these are reasons why bearings vibrate be it a new bearing or be it a used bearing or a bearing under operations. Now, so this bearing is a very excellent candidate uh, for actually condition monitoring uh, from an academic point of view uh, because there are a couple of things which can happen. So, if you see all these rolling elements, they all will operate because if the inner race is rotating and if the outer race is fixed, there are applications where the vice versa happens. So, all of them will have a relative rate of motion related to the say rotational speed n and these are known as the bearing characteristic defect frequencies. And I had discussed this earlier also. So, the bearing what happens or we will have in a damaged rolling element radial and axial vibrations, uneven vibration level, levels, often with shocks. I will come to the shocks part a little later. Impact rates for the individual varying components. So, these characteristic defect frequencies and their harmonics will show up in the bearing spectrum. But the most important thing is also vibrations at high frequencies 60 kilohertz related to radial resonance and bearings. And why again that happens? You know now if the impurities have come to a subtle surge level that there is a large pothole because of a pit has occurred. So, this will give rise to a lot of high frequency impacts in the time domain and you all know by now this in the frequency domain is nothing but of high frequency vibrations and that is the principle behind the commercially some shock pulse meters are available to monitor them these vibrations and this occur and this will excite the bearings resonance and a designer always ensures that the bearings natural frequency is nowhere close to the operating speed of the machine. But we if we are to measure the high frequency radial resonance of the bearings, we can say for sure that a bearing defect has occurred and that is of course, for the rolling element bearing. Now, of course, another class of bearing is this journal bearings. Of course, 
the fluid for limb bearings fluid is there and of course, because of the eccentricity there will be a pressure build up and what happens many a times you see the phenomena of oil whirl will occur. This oil whirling frequencies you will see that we will discuss in the next slide, but many a times if the bearing housing is loose in the housings I will see subharmonics of half or 1 by 3 x rpm and being radial this will you see primary they are all radial vibrations okay. and looseness will defect. Of course, another important thing of course, not related to vibration which we will discuss later on is this wear particle wear debris particle is something which we are going to see when we talk about this uh, general bearings, when we talk about wear debris analysis. A lot of deposits will occur in this oil and through an oil analysis we can understand the condition of the bearing. But from a vibration monitoring point of view you will see a lot of subharmonic. Subharmonic means the fractional, fractional harmonics either 1 by 3 x, 1 by 2 x etcetera which you will see in the vibration spectrum. And of course, you will see the oil will occurs because of the reason that if the shaft is rotating at speed omega, you see this point which is rotating, this has a no speed omega and this has a speed 0 which is at rest. So, the average speed is somewhere around you know I I 0.5 omega, but actually the oil will frequencies. 0.42 to 0.48 omega. So, you will see the oil welling frequencies even in a good journal bearing, but if you are monitoring the oil welling frequencies you can see what is the condition of the bearing as opposed to the amplitude at oil well, but for bearings to maintain that this eccentricity is the same we can do what is known as the relative vibration displacements through x and y we can do what is known as the orbit plots. We have discussed them during orbit plots. So, if the orbit plots change the shape you know that x and y are not of the same magnitude and this also gives us a clue as to something is wrong with the journal bearing. Now, we will come across many gears they will have teeth I have not drawn them. So, one is this because of a gear box of course, there are bearings so on there are lubricants etcetera. I will see very importantly is this gear meshing frequency in the frequency domain and then side bands. Side bands around G M F is a telltale signs of course, you have to one has to monitor them and usually radials. So, side bands around tooth meshing frequency indicate modulation eccentricity at frequency corresponding to side band spacings. Okay. So, when gears are subjected to varying load gears or bearings subjected to varying load I will have amplitude modulated signals and when they are either to varying speed I will have frequency modulated signals. 
So, by proper demodulation and Hilbert transform is one technique of doing demodulation. In fact, this class is a good review of uh, whatever fault conditions we have discussed so far and this will be a good idea to understand this class and recap what you have done. So, side bands around tooth meshing frequency indicate modulation eccentricity at frequency corresponding to side band spacings and you all know if this gear had n 1 t 1 teeth n 2 t 2 teeth. So, n 1 times t 1 is equal to n 2 times t 2 and this distance in hertz will be n 1 60. So, I will have what is known as g m f plus minus n 1 by 60 and g m f plus minus n 2 by 60 and so on. And for different gear boxes, you can calculate the gear meshing frequencies and particularly for planetary gear boxes, you can refer to my book details of which you can find out at iitnoise.com, where I have given to find out g m f of planetary gear boxes. Now, another very important machinery fault is mechanical looseness. We talked about so many elements here, shaft carrying a certain component. They are loose, they are they can slide around, okay, they can hit against something else. So, a lot of this impacts will occur. So, when impacts occur, The vibration signal actually for a nice periodic signal, but if impacts occur what happens a lot of high values occur, but then because this is my limit of my data acquisition system a lot of clipping occurs clipping of the waveforms occur. Impacts give rise to high vibration amplitudes, which produce which produce clipped waveform. So, if you do an FFT of a clipped waveform, you will actually see a lot of subharmonics. So, 1, 1 and half x, 1, 3 x etcetera, 2. So, these are telltale signs. There is a lot of lot of inter subharmonics will create. And these are telltale signs of signals where there is lot of looseness in the system. You will come across machines where there are a lot of belt drives. Of course, when I, I had told you to detect looseness, we can use what is known as the stroboscopy. Like finding out loose belt in engines. So, this can be found out in such systems. Okay. So, in a faulty belt drive, the RPM of the belt and particularly in the radial directions.
Now, in a fluid handling device, be it water, air, we talked about turbines, we talked about pumps, we talked about compressors. So, if the turbulence has increased because of a defect, there will be dominant blade and vane pass frequencies in their harmonics and they will be in radial and axial directions and then their levels would increase indicating that there is an increase in the turbulence. But many of the scenarios you will come across that many systems are actually driven by electrical motors. Okay. Many a times the supply frequency related issues do come up or twice the supply frequency will come up in the spectrum and sometimes because of the grounding improper grounding there is a ground loop which occurs and this if it is not avoided between your instrumentation if any two devices are kept at a very low potential, very low potential difference. And if there is a conducting path, there will be a flow of current. So, uh, those of you who are doing instrumentation for CBM, ground loop is a problem which occurs in all kinds of measurements. So, sometimes when you mount an accelerometer, it is a good practice to put a mica washer that is one. Many times some of this instrumentation you, you can have them battery powered even if you run them on UPS it is not good because they still use an AC signal and there will be a ground problem okay, supply frequency problem. So, these problems can be taken care of and of course, you will know for sure that whether a particular vibration is because of the electrical signal is once you switch off the electrical supply and there will be many case cases and particularly for transient vibrations which is known as you know coasting up a machine down. So, what would happen if a machine had uh, given examples earlier, if a machine is just switched off, vibrations would reduce and if there is no power obviously, the machine is going to come down to rest. So, such and then of course, these are transient signals. So, we have to use a non stationary signal analysis technique to deal with such signals like EMD or wavelets, but the best part about it is no electrical supply frequency is present. But however, in many of the electrical systems, we take the motor current 
as an indicator of fault condition and this is something I which I am going to discuss next week when you we talk about MCSA the theory behind it and the practical applications. So, sometimes it is not uh, good to eliminate uh, vibrations uh, I mean it is a good idea to eliminate vibrations by switching off the electrical power supply frequencies. So, this will disappear when we turn off the power because anything which are related to the electrical signal will get switched off. Okay. So, this can be taken care of. So, this uh, class uh, gave you an overview of uh, whatever we had studied so far in terms of finding out faults in mechanical systems. So, basically a mechanical systems consists of a motor or a prime mover driving a mechanical unit and the different common machine elements which one will or machine components one would come across are a rotating shaft which could be unbalanced which could have a crack which could be misaligned and of course, it could be carrying a beer, uh, gear supported on bearings put in a housing which could have cracks which could have a foundation problem and so on and then bearings themselves could be general bearings or anti friction bearings. So, all these things will manifest as vibration signals and as you will see you know, the signal which comes out will never say that I am from a bearing or I am from a gear everything will be a composite signal. So, we have to use our signal processing techniques in a very efficient manner in CBM to identify the characteristic frequencies as per the charts I had just discussed and uh, if you follow this chart you will be able to practically find out many faults in systems, but let me tell you this is not an exhaustive list and uh, again from my experience sometimes I have seen that systems always do not follow these charts. Uh, in my book in an appendix uh, I have uh, given another chart which is out of my practical experience uh, dealing with about hundreds of different industries uh, doing machinery condition monitoring. So, you can refer to my book to see this chart and see some practical case studies wherein we can find out faults in systems. Thank you.